योग कर्मसु कौशल now in the second part as i said because i have to take uh, discuss this sustainable development goals from the indian stand point because india uh, houses for 1/6th of population so everyone is looking towards us how we are attaining the sustainable development goals so let me tell you that uh, through the slide my through my slides uh, the sustainable development goals adopted in 2015 by 193 members countries at a high level meeting of the united nations general assembly on which came into force on 1st january 2015 it is said that today after the completion of this millennium development goal in 2015 everyone was looking after what what is post 2015 millennium development goals it was in the 2015 itself united nations general assembly adopted this uh, sdgs and it came into effect uh, from 1st january 2016 as i said the, the nicety of this sustainable development goals being an intergenerational equity is that almost all countries there are more than 193 member countries have time to attain this sustainable development goals by 2030 so now question comes india is also signatory to this and india is also committed to achieve this sustainable development goals by 2030 but looking at the after this uh, 2014 the new government came the most of the um, sustainable development goals we are talking about are already they were in our development uh, program so much of india's development agenda is mirror in the sustainable development goals sustainable development of 1/6 of humanity will be of great consequence to the world and our beautiful planet because as i said in most of the development goals the sustainable development goals they were already mirrored in the our development agenda so we contributed india as a country contributed a lot how what should be the sustainable what should be the goals so that and how to attain because everyone as i said in my earlier also looking after us india being a host to more than uh, one sixth of humanity because india is a 130 crores plus country so everyone is looking after how we are going to attain then what are the agenda we have to set for our development so we are committed and this presently the government is committed to attain all this sustainable development goals and they are working day in day out to attain so india played a prominent role in the uh, formulation of sdg and much of india's country's national development agenda is mirrored in the sdg so our it's 17 goals 169 targets and 316 306 national indicators as i said that most of the development goals that were there in the sustainable development goals they were already in the national development agenda so we all we are step ahead of the sustainable development goals because by the when the, the government came the present government uh, the incumbent government when it took office in 2014 it started working how what should be the our national development agenda so in that respect as i said that most of the development goals national development goals they were mirrored in the sustainable development goals that is what i am to say and this is the contribution of india to world community uh, taking cue from the memorable phrase sabka saath sabka vikas translated as collective effort inclusive development stakeholders from various walks of life central and state governments industry civil society technical experts and academics are coming together to promote a better future for the country you see you cannot because the the very good facts uh, that has been coined by the government that is sabka saath and sabka vikas the uh, everyone has to join and everyone has to get the fruits of the vikas that is the development and that is how the present government work is working and the sustainable development also nothing but it is an, being an intergenerational equity by 2030 we have to achieve all these goals that are being set in the sustainable development goals and as i said the three parameters the important parameters i said that is social dimensions economic dimensions 
and environmental dimensions that has been taken care of. And I, I talked also earlier of the five peace, people, planet, uh, prosperity, um, peace and partnership. Without that, you cannot attain. And as I also have said that all these goals are interconnected and interrelated. If you want to achieve no hunger, then automatically poverty will be not there. Again, if you want to have an uh, equality, uh, women empowerment, then if you have a good education, quality to education, automatically you are going to get that. So if again, by that again, you can have an uh, sanitation and health also. All these are interconnected. My point is that, so this, this 17 goals are beautifully crafted so that the present generation will not be deprived of their uh, right to development. And that is exactly how the right to development is in 1989. The United Nations Declaration has spelled out that has been taken care of being a human rights. Now it has become one of the important human rights because sustainable development goals is nothing but for the present generation. It is a human rights. It is a, I can say it is a fourth generation human rights because we are in the fourth generation. So how to achieve? So in that connection, now if we have time, who have committed to do and how to achieve that. So, in India, as you know, we, we, we work on a adversarial center and all states. So, we work on the principles of cooperative federalism. India is especially fortunate to have highly committed governments at the center of the states. Thus, in the spirit of cooperative federalism, the two levels of the government have joined hands to bring, the, bring about the change India needs. Because agile in a federal structure, the central government cannot do without the uh, cooperation from the state governments. Because at the end of the day, the people, uh, if they are going to get the benefits, it has to percolate from center to the state, and the state has to make it available to all the citizens, it, uh, citizens, so that they can be part of this uh, SDG agenda. So now. Uh, as I said, uh, how to achieve? Because uh, the sustainable development goals, you can see there are around 58 centrally sponsored schemes which have been extended under Article 282 of Constitution of India to state governments for achieving 17 sustainable development goals, which the state governments have to concurrently implement them in the spirit of cooperative federalism. Because you see, the most of the uh, these goals that are being uh, identified and that if I want to achieve, the central government have, has come up with some uh, around 58 centrally sponsored schemes. You see, the best uh, example is that during this pandemic, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the central government, whatever the central government has taken decision to improve the quality of the people and for hunger and the poverty, elevation of poverty, or whether um, uh, giving input to the uh, um, uh, Manufacturing, you will see they are all centrally sponsored schemes and that percolates from center to the state government and state governments gives this to the citizens and that is how it can be worked. So the centrally sponsored policies along with related laws, needs and continuous evaluation and its implementation by state government is a must to achieve these goals within the time frame. Because as I said, though we are committed because India houses for one sixth of population around 130, 130 crores people. So everybody is looking after that. But it has been said that even last four years, because it began in from 1st January 2016, we are in the 2020. But in these four years, already we have achieved more than 50% of these sustainable development goals. Because that is how we are working. So this is a nice example how through a cooperative federalism, the central government, the central sponsored uh, scheme, they are being percolated to the uh, state government and state governments and the citizens. Because otherwise, it will go in vain. So the central sponsored policies and with related laws. For example, if I am talking about the, uh, I am not going to discuss all the water because I, I am not, uh, it is not a law class so that I can discuss what is the legal framework and what are the policies. But you can uh, Google it out and you will find what are the policies that are available. For example, if I am talking about uh, uh, no poverty, zero hunger. So zero hunger, we have a law that is 
the law is uh, Food Security Act. Uh, what is this Food Security Act? You have come across uh, the in the COVID-19 pandemic under the Food Security Act, the government has doled out the uh, rations to the needy, both uh, below poverty line and also above poverty line. So around 80 crores people have been given rations for last three to four months. This is exactly what exactly zero hunger, uh, how the uh, policy has to be implemented. That is the best example I can say. Uh, because before going to that, as I said, uh, if you look at the SDG number one, no poverty, uh, the, the statistics I am uh, in, displaying here, you can see the from the slides, you can uh, appreciate that 2019 and 2030, uh, 20, what we have achieved. So around 21.92% uh, life grew uh, poverty line, the, the uh, line uh, live below poverty line. Earlier it was around 40%. So by 19, 2019 and 20, uh, we have reduced that level because now only 21.92% are below poverty line. Because down the line, uh, uh, earlier, uh, ten, 8 to 10 years back, the below poverty line was more than 40% of the world of money, Indian population was uh, living in the below poverty line. And what is, how can you achieve? You see, the important is the Manrega policy. So 85.26% of people uh, which been uh, demanded uh, uh, the employment, they are getting this employment this, through this Manrega things. And you see, you see maternity benefits, 36.4% of people are getting, 4.2% 4 4 of people are uh, getting this rural and urban India household uh, live in the Kacha houses. This is exactly, I am giving the what we have achieved in the last uh, 19 and 20. Same way for zero hunger, you can, the statistics is self-explanatory, uh, you can uh, go uh, through the statistics, I am not uh, discussing everything because it will take a lot of time because there is a time limit. But you can appreciate what the government is working on zero hunger and what are our achievements. All the sectors that is there and the slides, you can, the, whatever the statistics that are being shown in the uh, slides are self-explanatory. For example, good health and well-being, which is one of the important things because now we are appreciating that uh, what is good health and well-being means in a pandemic-like situation. If we don't have a good health system, health healthcare system and well-being by the government, if it is not provided, what we are going to get? So the government is doing tremendous job. So this is the best example in the COVID-19. But one thing I can say is the maternity mortality ratio has been 1 to 1.22. That has been reduced from earlier statistics. There are uh, 38 physicians, nurse and uh, midwives for 10,000 uh, persons. Though uh, if I'm looking at from the global perspective, it is a little bit low, but we are working. So I'm not going to discuss all the things. You can uh, get it, a copy of this uh, slide share and you can go through it and you will get the idea how and what India is working. Again, quality education, my dear friend, it is a more concern for us. We are talking about the quality education. Does India providing a quality education. How many universities are under the best universities and world's best universities? None of the universities I am telling you, they are finding places in 100, best 100 um, universities of the world. I am not talking about even, they are not finding in the best 200 also. So there is a lot of scope for quality education because unless until we provide quality education, it is, we are not going to get other we cannot attain other sustainable development goals. For example, the first three sustainable developments I talk about, no poverty, zero hunger, well-being, health and well-being, it is widely related with the quality education. So quality education is one of the important uh, goals that has to be achieved by 2030 and India is working on that. Though we have the best example is we have made uh, primary education as a compulsory uh, uh, education money, fundamental rights under Article 21 Capital A. It is a good thing we are going on that. But still, many things we have to do unless until we have world class universities or we are not imparting quality education, we cannot stand uh, uh, with uh, 
uh, other countries because again the government has come out with a new word atma nirbhar bharat what do you mean by atma nirbhar bharat atma nirbhar bharat means uh, self reliant how can you have a self reliant without a quality education so the education the quality of education in india has to be improved there is a lot of scope but what i am talking about is what are the statistics i am displaying right now is 2019 2020 how what was it achieved and what is the exact the status when the status of our quality education uh, i am talking about then when i am talking about the gender equality my dear friend gender equality is one of the biggest problem in india and, and in most of the developing countries uh, but you look at the thing because the uh, sex ratio also it has been 8 896 for Uh, 100, 1000 males it is an uh, disturbing facts uh, so it is an i am talking about a consolidated uh, statistics the the statistics may differ from state to state you know some of the states the they are maintaining properly the male and female ratios are quite near there are in certain cases we have seen there is a lot of uh, lacuna there there is a female participation is there the government is working but we have if we look at there is a now at the present and 2019 and 2020 the sex ratio uh, at birth uh, is the female versus if i am talking about males it is 896 to 1000 it is not that bad looking at our past record but we are working on that so this is also one of the important thing and this is gender equality government is working for many laws uh, for example uh, we have come out with the duty free law sexual harassment at workplace sexual you know, domestic violence There are lot of uh, uh, women-oriented laws for empowering the women are there, and in, apart from the laws, also have good number of policies. But as I said, these policies and law will not do. It has to be percolate. So the enforcement or implementation of these policies, policies and law will determine our future uh, attainment. If I am talking about the gender equality. Now coming to the clean water and sanitation, my dear friends, it is the biggest issue. You are living. I am talking about from my point of view. If I am living in uh, a metro city, I I don't care about what is the condition of clean water or sanitation around the state or other parts. But it is very miserable, my dear friends. And even I am seeing many times within the city also we are not getting clean potable water. After 70 years of our independence, if we are not getting clean water or sanitation, it is a many worse situation and case. But the thanks to the government. they have come out with beautiful policies because we are going for an 100% uh, household toilets that is a best thing out of 100% uh, household we have achieved of course in rural and urban households we are also reached to 97.22 persons for example potable water the the government is working on this uh, the, there is a they have come out with a beautiful policy wherein it has been said that by uh, another 5 years every person every person on every household in the country will get tap water so that is an important thing if you are not getting the tap water the clean water we, if, the, if we are talking about we are talking about uh, we are going to uh, 5 trillion economy it is useless so the basic needs my dear friends and you can appreciate the why this goal because there is a lot of disparity now among the this present generation also we are living in the two extremes one extremes they are having all the facility and other extremes they are not getting a uh, water they have to walk uh, miles together to for to have a uh, clean water to get a clean potable water so i this statistics also also self explanatory i am not going to discuss because i have to say lot of things other goals also then question comes affordable and clean energy my dear friends it is one of the wonderful job the government is doing with ujala a policy now everyone is getting uh this uh, bottle gas because it is one of the important thing otherwise there will be if you are not going for a clean energy then it will be a, we are contributing to greenhouse gases in that case now all the households most of the country they are getting now the it has been electrified all citizens all the houses in india mostly they are 99.99% already been achieved and as i said the bottle gas it has reached to 61.4 percent is a good achievement and we are going for solar energy because it is one of the clean energy and the government is incentivized by giving incentives if you go for a solar energy so that is also one of the important thing and we are we are going to achieve because everyone is looking after us how we are 
meeting our energy uh, requirement so this solar energy is being a part of this tropical area india has also this uh, present government and the particular the prime minister has come out with an solar alliance with other countries those who are in the tropical lines they are going being uh, they have come out with an alliance it will go a long way uh, fulfilling our energy uh, requirements so sdg 8 is decent work and economic growth because you see if you don't have a decent work condition and a economic growth you cannot uh, compete with the world so this is also one of the important thing if you want to be uh, going for a uh, uh, for a better development then you have to your uh, working system and economic growth has to be taken care of so you see there is very an access 99.99% households in the country have a bank account because of the, the dhan jan yojana the government has come out is one of wonderful uh, uh, policy that government has come out now almost all citizens are having a bank account and that is exactly if the government wants to roll out something it has to reach direct the benefit goes to directly to the beneficiary this is one of the important thing and you look at the things 13 banking outlets per 1 lakh population you see in we are seeing but uh, in the metro we are getting for every 50 meter or 100 meter we are getting a bank but it is not so in the uh, other village or remote areas so the government is working again that is an important thing and the the statistics shows that there is a 6% unemployment rate comparing to the earlier statistics it is a good improvement only 6% are left out for employment that is also good thing so again i am not going to this uh, discuss all the statistics you can have a glance over what i have displayed in the, my share you can get it and you can discuss you can uh, get a idea of that and that then comes industry innovation and infrastructure that is the important thing if you want to be a developed country and you must have a good in, industry infrastructure and innovation culture has to be there we are lacking though india is uh, uh, there are many industry pockets uh, in india but india is more an agriculture based country so if you want to move towards an industry you have to manufacture goods of world class so that people will buy so that we can get uh, uh, good revenue or we can say uh, we are going to get uh, in uh, the things in the dollars and uh, for example i am talking about when i am talking about innovation i am looking uh, comparing to other countries our innovation culture is very far behind if i am talking about the world innovation index that is an index that is being published every year by the world intellectual property organization to appreciate that go we have improved a lot but still a country having 130 crores people the we are not coming out with that much of patents comparing to small countries like sweden norway or other countries they are in the first ten so that one we have to work up on so we do we have a policy innovation policy we have come up but we have to work up on and we have to for that if you want to innovation in india we must improve our uh, education quality education so as i said that everything is interlinked if you want to have a in industry innovation and infrastructure so there must be a good education system a quality to education system is required otherwise you are not going to get that so this is exactly the statistics again i am not going to discuss again reduce in inequalities my dear friends it is the most disturbing thing we are living in a country there is a living in two extremes in first extreme in the one first one side we are seeing that people are having everything and in other side the people are not getting if i'm talking about the present statistics says around 22 23% people of the population are living below poverty line where we stand so that inequality has to be reduced at all at all costs so that is exactly the government is working upon and they are the policies are driven towards uh, that direction to reduce inequalities and again as i said whatever the statistics i have displayed in my displayed in my um, this uh, screen you can it is for the 2019 and 2020 and we are going uh, going ahead in a right direction now sustainable cities and communities it is also one of the important things we must have heard about the smart cities uh, earlier the government has come out identified 100 smart cities they want to give all the 
facilities uh, to the cities and to get it smart every facilities so now government is working slowly that every um, first uh, in the first case it was for the metro then slowly it was the two tier now it is to the three tier cities so we must have the sustainable cities and communities so there will be little migration my dear friend we have seen this migration program during this covid 19 where people from one state to another they have migrated because they didn't have any uh, sustainable work they are getting so then they don't have a communication to or the transportation to travel so the government is again working upon that because in a sustainable cities or communities people should use less communication uh, travel uh, so that there will be less energy or the uh, creation of carbon credit uh, carbons again as i said sustainable um, sdg 12 is responsible consumption and production this is one of the important thing whatever of you go if you are consuming if you are not producing and consuming more than that means you are importing the things from other countries so responsible consumption and production is one of the important parameter because if if you achieve this parameter automatically the sdg number 1 and number 2 will taken care of that is no poverty and zero hunger because it has a direct link with the consumption and production pattern of every country and the statistics if i what i have displayed it uh, quite encouraging because if you look at the earlier uh, years uh, statistics uh, comparing to that we are going in a right direction and uh, that uh, by 2030 we should we are optimistic that we are going to get that world standard climate action my dear friends this is one of the important thing because climate action means it is related with the climate change india uh, uh, has a long coastline and if the uh, temperature rises by 2 degree to 4 degree as it has been estimated then automatically most of the uh, uh, coastal cities they will be submerged it has other implications because you see now and because of the climate change we are seeing uh, Uh, erratic uh, pattern of rains. Uh, there is a lot of uh, in summer. We are getting the temperature to rising above 50 uh, degree Celsius, and we have seen many natural disaster. This is because of the climate change. So we have to work upon that. We have to generate less greenhouse gases. Otherwise, we are not going to uh, tackle. So though we are not committed to this uh, uh, United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Uh, being a non annexer country but to have come out because after so become uh, we have signed this paris agreement which is uh, for almost all the countries they have to work upon for a better tomorrow so definitely we have to we are working that direction as i said that uh, we are saving uh, energy by supplying this led bulbs again uh, 35.2% of total electricity generation is from renewable energy it is a beautiful work we are doing because earlier we were generating the electricity mostly by thermal power only and for uh, as you know thermal power is contributing to the greenhouse gases so again the forest cover also we are getting we are I mean, uh, enlarging the forest covers these are the things we are taking so if we take care of this climate action mitigation and adaptation so automatically our climate will be taken care of so uh, SDG 13 is an important area I wanted to discuss. Then, question comes to my mind. The mind is this: uh, SDG 14 and 15. There are life below water and life above the water. They are nothing but our biodiversity. So, all the living things they are in this uh, earth. Either they are living below the water or above the uh, land. So, because you have to conserve these things. Now, such these are the they are the and the genetic resources. Uh, of this species they play an important role after the uh, advent of biotechnology so we have when after signing the convention on biological diversity it talks about the uh, conservation sustainable use of its components and fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising out of the uh, utilization of genetic resources with that of technology Uh, the convention we have come out with also a beautiful law that is biodiversity act of 2002 so we have to take care of life below water and life uh, uh, the 15 is uh, uh, life on land 
if you take care of then automatically because these are the these all things are uh, renewable um, resources then if you are um, using this renewable resources the being sustainable definitely you are going to get the sustainable development so we are in the right direction as far as because india is a mega biodiversity country more than 8 to 9 percent of the total biodiversity is in india so that is a well uh, good thing we are taking uh, share of and as i said peace justice and strong institution without this also we are not going to get this uh, sustainable development because you see if there is a disparity if you don't have a strong institutional system and if there is no peace and justice then we are not going to achieve so india being a rule of law country we have a very good judici committed judiciary everything has been taken care of that is how we are getting so as i said uh, look at the thing say 88.8% of india's uh, population is covered uh, with aadhar uh, that is that provides uh, universal legal identity, uh, identity it is one of its own kind this much of people uh, falling under a uh, one uh, program that is aadhar it is a commendable job though it has its own issues but definitely uh, apart from that again uh, because if there is no peace or then if there is no justice system do if you do we don't have a judicial system a committed judicial system then we are not going to get the sustainable development but thanks to the supreme court of india and the other courts they are doing commendable job they are protecting the rights of the uh, people on and off on so and that is the reason comparing to other countries the uh, crimes uh, uh, are la less far than the other developing countries i'm not talking about the developed countries so peace if you don't have a peace we are not going to get uh, development so it has a link the peace justice and strong institution has a direct correlation with the sustainable development so if we are going to get the first 15 sustainable development goals you must have a strong judicial system there should be a strong institutions to protect us and then peace has to be prevailed so if you don't have a peace so if there is a injustice anywhere there is a threat to justice everywhere so that is the reason if there should not be any injustice to anyone and that is how the we have to work upon and this sdg 16 is an important aspect but uh, for your kind information we have a beautiful judiciary uh, judicial system we have a strong institution that takes care of so definitely you are going uh, ahead of uh, this goal uh, uh, with this uh, uh, i have completed the, my talk on sustainable development uh, goals and where india stands so my dear friends as i said this is a multi disciplinary subject so whatsoever your discipline you can link your discipline with any of the goals my dear friends being a, if you are a, uh, your discipline is science if your discipline is economics if your discipline is uh, sociology if your discipline is politics talk of anything my dear friends every discipline has its role uh, a major role to play with connecting the things with the 17 goals i have discussed so this is being a student i mean being a teacher and particularly we are in the entry level teachers we should make aware of all the developments that are going on so you have to keep yourself abreast with the contemporary issues and you correlate these contemporary issues with your discipline while discussing in the class and that is the reason my dear friends why this uh, faculty induction program is being organized so you have you should connect as i said because though i am a student of law i am not talking about the law but as i said i have chosen a topic it has all the dimensions so now we are living in a uh, multidisciplinary regime you cannot discuss everything from your own perspective your own discipline you have to connect your discipline with other disciplines that's the reason i usually say in my class you have to make excursion to other allied fields when i'm getting a uh, time i have to make excursion to other allied fields other than the law i should know what is sociology i should know what is politics what i should know what is sociology i should know what is economics what is uh, science everything so we unless until so but the question comes and now the research also what we are doing 
it is more of interdisciplinary in nature unless until we link our discipline with other discipline our teaching is useless so in a modern uh, if we want to impart as i said the uh, goal number 5 qualitative education that is the important thing so if you want to impart a qualitative education a teacher is the best person he is the one of the important stakeholders and he connect the student with his knowledge because unless we uh, ignite the minds of the students it is very difficult to get a quality education the role the major role has to be played by the teacher apart from we should have a infrastructure all the infrastructure i agree but the teacher can do wonders in the class if he keep himself or herself abreast with the contemporary issues and connect these issues with his or her discipline what he is going to in the discuss class so that is how the induction program is there so i have of course i then because i have a short period of time i cannot discuss at long because it, it takes if i have to discuss this section uh, development goals i require minimum 16 hours otherwise it is you cannot do justice but the very purpose of this induction program as i say that you should inculcate the art of teaching and you have to inculcate how to the skill you have to learn skill the skill is interconnecting your subject with other subject if you are not in a position to interconnect your subject with other subject is useless so in that case again my dear friends so how we can interconnect unless you read properly so my sincere request to all of you because you have joined this um, uh, faculty induction program so the very objective of faculty induction program earlier it was known as known as was as known as a known as orientation program so we have to orient you how to teach i am not saying you see that teaching to masters or the post graduate levels or the higher education is quite different from teaching primary uh, students primary schools so it has its own connotations my dear friend so primary teacher has its own uh, understanding a uh, higher secondary education teacher has his own understanding and uh, if you are a part of higher education you, your understanding could be very clear because you have to correlate everything contemporary issue with your discipline So, so whatsoever as i said you are discipline whether you are a part of economics you have to discuss sustainable development for economic uh, from the optic of uh, uh, economics you can discuss the uh, your um, sustainable development from the optic of sociology you can discuss from the psychology you can you see so this is everything that is to be seen through a prism then you will get a clear picture you will have a beautiful picture uh, i think uh, i have taken much of time and i hope uh, you have enjoyed uh, what i have said and if you have any uh, questions you can contact me me with through mail i will definitely give you my answer thank you very much thank you very much sir today our session is very fruitful and interesting sir thank you very much again to spend your valuable time for our hrdc i am thankful to sir uh, on behalf of hrdc and our participant thank you very much sir